responsible funding for rights and wrongs, the Human Rights Television Series, has been provided by the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, the Body Shop Foundation, and the Aaron Diamond Foundation. Global Vision presents a new program on the cutting edge of change. This week, Mexico, the land of opportunity for American industry, where Mexican laborers are paying the price. One half day of work to buy a, a gallon of milk. To the north, U.S. border agents struggle to control the flood of illegal immigrants, and human rights abuses are reported all across the frontier. We arrest more people in a year than most uh, officers in other agencies arrest in a lifetime. We'll also have a video diary shot under fire in Sarajevo and a report from Sri Lanka. All this on Rights and Wrongs, the television magazine of human rights. In New York, Charlene hunter -Gall. The U.S. border with Mexico has always been a frontier territory, a place where rules of law have only the smallest foothold, where profiteering is a way of life. It's along this frontier where worlds of such extreme difference collide that we focus our program. Human rights, it seems, are easily sacrificed on both sides of the border. We begin in Mexico. With the signing of the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, American industry began flooding south of the border to seek cheap labor and reduced manufacturing costs. Good for business, the early report said, and devastating to the local environment. Now, human rights standards are threatened as well. They are called maquilladoras, a small industrial plant that employ Mexican day workers. They line the border by the thousands, earning large profits for American business. But that profit comes at a price, a price paid by the workers whose wages only allow for substandard living in a most difficult, even dangerous environment. It's 6 a.m. and 17-year-old Lucy Munoz sets out for the Zenith factory where she will spend the day shift soldering television circuit boards. The early morning hours. Both the factory and Lucy's home are just a short drive from the Texas border in Mexico where the first world meets the third. Lucy lives in this cluster of shacks called Colonia Roma and shares a room with her father, mother, and six brothers and sisters. We have no floor. The truth is, we don't have the money. With the money I make, we just don't have enough. Lucy works 45 hours a week for 87,000 pesos, roughly 60 cents an hour. There are many like Lucy who have fled rural poverty to work in U.S.-owned manufacturing plants called maquilladoras. 600,000 Mexicans are employed in more than 2,000 plants along the border. They assembled everything from General Motors cars to Fisher Price toys for shipment back to the U.S. Many factories have closed in the U.S. and reopened south of the border to enjoy the cheap labor of workers like Lucy. GM, for example, is now the largest private employer in Mexico, employing over 60,000 people. The border is viewed as a miniature free trade zone. It provides a clue as to what might happen under the terms of the North American Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA. The Maquillas have brought jobs, but at a price. We are now in debt to buy our beds, and we already owe a lot of money, so that with the money we are making right now, we don't have enough food. And sometimes we don't have enough to eat. It's a very difficult situation. When one sees some of the families trying to exist on wages that are 63 cents an hour, at sheer subsistence level, one realizes that there is not much dignity in that kind of work or that kind of life. Ed Kruger of the American Friends Service Committee has worked for 30 years monitoring conditions on the border. 
one finds literally thousands of young women and young men who are under 18 who are working sometimes till one o'clock in the morning very difficult night shifts zenith uh, general electric general motors fisher price the the li list goes on and on just as if you were reading a, a list from the fortune 500. mccallan texas reynosa mexico america's new address for international business the maquiladora program can save you money and it can make your company money the figures speak for themselves mexican wages and benefits are three to four times less than korea and taiwan more than nine times lower than in japan and ten times less costly than in the united states anybody that is not looking throughout the world right now uh, for the total package that it takes to be industrially competitive has their head in the sand, basically. Bill Wolf runs a That's successful Makiadora, manufacturing everything from underwear to baseball gloves. We as people that buy things, we decide where the baseball glove is going to be made because I don't want to pay 50 bucks for the glove, okay? I won't buy the glove. We as the people that are consumers create the environment that create going to Mexico. It's Mexico today. It will be uh, uh, India. It'll be Africa. We have an awful lot of world yet to go to. And thank God for it. But what's it really like living on the border? What is the quality of life your family can expect? When it comes to housing, McAllen has a variety of options. Family subdivisions, older Palm Line neighborhoods, and luxury condominiums. It's the country club life. The cities have grown from 350,000 to over 700,000. Many of the people who come to this area come from the rural areas of Mexico where jobs are not available, especially for young women. They come to the border and find themselves with very terrible circumstances for housing. And often the families are without uh, sewage, without drainage, without streets, without electricity or potable water. Health conditions along the border have now reached crisis level. Nearly 100 million gallons of raw sewage laced with pesticide is dumped into the Rio Grande every day, making the river a breeding ground for infectious disease. Hepatitis and tuberculosis are endemic on both sides of the border. Industrial pollution is also rampant. Solvent and chemical waste are dumped in drainage canals in industrial parks and near chemical plants located adjacent to people's homes. Homes of people like Sara de Leon de Cantu. The life that we have here with all these chemical plants is one of panic. Waste material is dumped out in the yard. Behind the chemical plant is a big lagoon where they have been storing chemical waste for many years. Last month, the liquid overflowed in the neighborhood property, and we were all affected. I think in certain areas where the population is being exposed to very toxic chemicals at very high levels, that those people uh, will have significant health problems and shorter lifespans. Dr. Carmen Rocco is the medical director at the Brownsville Community Health Center, right across the border from the U.S. plants in Montemoros, Mexico. What's happening on the other side of the border affects this side in terms of everything. The toxic waste don't stop at the border and check in with a border gate. Um, so there is no border as far as toxic wastes go and as far as air emissions go and as far as a polluted river. The most disturbing health problem on both sides of the border is an unusually large number of anencephalic births, babies born without brains, 19 in Brownsville and 42 in Matamoros over the past 18 months, three times the U.S. average. 
many die prior to the end of the pregnancy and some live for several days. In fact, the last one that we had lived for five days. While abuse of the environment harms the unborn, so can the conditions in some of the factories which jeopardize the health of a workforce, 80% of whom are women. One finds very few factories where the health and safety of the workers is taken into real consideration. Workers should be informed of the dangers which they face in the workplace, the, the chemicals which can affect them and their offspring. The chemicals that have the labels in English. There are still thousands of workers who have never been told that lead can cause birth defects. I was pregnant. And I had to ask my supervisor for permission to leave because I was feeling really sick. Petra was working at uh, General Electric. This is the company that has the motto, we bring good things to life. I was four months pregnant and I lost my baby because the supervisor during the whole night shift wouldn't let me out. A big hemorrhage came. I had a strong hemorrhage. They didn't take me to the clinic. They didn't do anything for me. After that, on top of all this, they threatened me, and they told me that if I told anyone or threatened to sue them, that I would be worse off, and that the only thing that I could do was to quit my job. And that's what happened. GE disputes Petra's version of the story and told rights and wrongs that supervisory and medical people at the plant acted responsibly in this matter. GE continues to offer Ms. Santiago free access to company medical personnel and has offered to re-employ her. She has not accepted either offer. Workers are not allowed to organize, to, to exercise their rights of association or their, their basic workers' rights. And this is especially notorious in the maquiladoras. Mary Claire Acosta is one of Mexico's foremost human rights advocates. This is one of the promises of the government to foreign business to make business conditions profitable in Mexico by keeping wages down and by forcing the workers to work in those conditions. The governmental bodies that deal with human rights in Mexico have left out labor rights and political rights as part of the human rights agenda. So uh, we feel that this is, has mutilated the concept of human rights. In 1991, Amnesty International reported that torture by law enforcement officials in Mexico was commonplace, and Human Rights Watch found that despite the creation of a national commission of human rights, abuses had not ceased. The U.S. government has not really uh, looked in very carefully into the situation of human rights in Mexico. Mexico has a very bad record of human rights. Mexico has a very bad record on freedom of expression. Mexico has a lousy record on the respect of the vote. Mexico has a terrible record on corruption. Adolfo Aguilar Zinsa is Mexico a professor at the National University of Mexico. Of laws and the respect of the rule of law. I don't think that the international community should ignore that. I don't think that Mexico can buy a political amnesty against international criticism because it endorses free trade. President Clinton is negotiating supplementary agreements to the free trade agreement signed by the Bush administration, one on protecting the environment, the other on labor, not to protect Mexican workers, but to minimize the loss of U.S. jobs to Mexico. The issue of suppression of human rights in Mexico is still being ignored. I think that the United States should condition the free trade agreement to the establishment of uh, an accountable, freely elected government. <laughs>
Is that much to ask Mexico? The same thing you want for Cuba. Free, fair, open elections. And we believe that as long as this um, government does not allow for free and democratic elections, um, that um, human rights are, are, are going to, to be less and less respected and, and, and more and more violated instead of the other. We are very worried about the fact that the free trade agreement is going to lower um, social standards and legal standards that protect labor rights and environmental rights and other human rights. One of our main preoccupations is that with a free trade agreement, the whole country is going to become one big maquiladora. For 17-year-old Lucy and the half million other workers like her, this means more shifts at $5 a day. You are watching Rights and Wrongs, Human Rights Television. Each week at this time, news and global perspectives you don't see elsewhere. Our weekly rights reel offers footage and perspectives rarely seen elsewhere. This week, as the military conflict in Bosnia continues to preoccupy the world, we feature part of an unusual video diary produced under fire in Sarajevo. We also speak with two outspoken writers, one Serbian, the other Bosnian, who were honored by PEN, a group that defends the right to free expression, a basic human right. We begin our report on the streets of Sarajevo. These are the sounds of a city under siege, a military salute to one of Sarajevo's defenders, a burial ritual, an everyday event. But before Adisa's lover departed, they had agreed to marry, and so they did. No champagne, only tears. What are you I think that uh, the world is missing point because it didn't pay attention to what was going on before the war started. All the armies should be uh, disarmed and the patrolling the militia, the, the police patrolling should be done by the United Nations. This situation cannot be solved with maps, with any solution based on ethnic principles. This war has succeeded in some of its goals because one of the goals was to uh, provoke exactly this feeling of uh, mutual hatred and uh, the sense of uh, incapability of living together. These are the Tamil Tigers, a separatist guerrilla force which says it's fighting to protect the rights of the Tamil minority in Sri Lanka the island nation off the coast of India, occupied by more than 17 million people. The man they'd been fighting to topple was hardline president Ranasinghe Pramadasa, pictured here by Sri Lanka television during the last hours of his life. Critics say Pramadasa, blown up on May 1st by a suicide bomber reportedly linked to the militant tigers, was an authoritarian who dominated the volatile political scene the cremation of the president and the assassination of the leader of the opposition just a week earlier has traumatized the country, where the conflict between the Tamil ethnic minority and the Sinhalese majority has cost more than 20,000 lives, according to Freedom House. Civilian massacres, 
uh, our, our routine um, on both sides. Uh, it, Author Bill McGowan, who studied Sri Lanka, says Tamil grievances are legitimate. There is a general legitimacy to a lot of the claims that uh, they, they fear for their lives and their safety and because of the human rights abuses that committed against young Tamil men by the Sinhalese dominated counterinsurgency forces. Human rights groups say torture and ill treatment by the police and military are common. A Sri Lanka government representative declined to be interviewed by rights and wrongs. And a spokesperson dismissed these reports of abuses as fabrications. For Rights and Wrongs, this is Philip Tomlinson. Rights and Wrongs welcomes your written comments and suggestions. You can also order a transcript for $5 or a video cassette for $24.95 by writing to the Global Center, P.O. Box 311, Radio City Station, New York, New York, 10101. Send checks or money orders only. Credit card holders call 1-800-541-2535. No one really knows the numbers. Illegal immigrants from Mexico cross into the United States at will. One million crossings a year is the estimate from one border agency, but thousands of those are repeaters crossing back and forth. A clear count aside, it is a concern that while the traffic is increasing, so too are the reports of abuse by border agents of the immigrants they capture. We travel to Texas to report on the concerns of human rights monitors along one stretch of the Rio Grande. So far this year, we have rescued six people, all suffered gunshot wounds to their heads and beatings. All were rescued from the river. Human rights monitor Arturo Salis watches both sides of the border. He's seen the violence. He knows the fears that many undocumented aliens feel when crossing the frontier. Robbery is common, even rape, and on occasion, abusive treatment by border patrol agents on the U.S. side of the border. Sylvester Reyes, chief patrol agent in the McAllen, Texas sector. Uh, it'd be ludicrous for me to, to deny that abusers haven't occurred on this, on this border. I mean, I know of half a dozen agents that have been fired where the investigation showed that they abused their authority. But the important thing is that those of us that are in charge of the sectors cannot and must not tolerate any kind of abuse of, of human beings. Indeed, human rights abuses along the border are well documented. Amnesty International, America's Watch, and American Friends Service Committee all have issued reports citing clear and increasing patterns of rights abuse. The most egregious cases, like this one captured on a security camera, we tend to hear about. But human rights groups report that general patterns of abusive behavior go unchecked, unreported, and undisciplined. Uh, I'll, I'll put up my operation against anybody, any type of law enforcement uh, anywhere in the world, because they, they do a, a very tough job under very tough circumstances. Uh, we arrest more people in a year than most uh, officers in other agencies arrest in a lifetime. Here in the Rio Grande Valley, agents average 10 to 15 arrests per shift. Moving west through Arizona, the numbers increase. In the San Diego area, where the greatest numbers of abuse are reported, the greatest numbers of illegal aliens are flooding across the border. Daytime, nighttime, virtually at will. Arrests are massive and often mistaken. Abelino Molina is a United States citizen. He was arrested by INS agents. We were crossing the border and they gave me a pass. I told them I lost my papers and they took us inside. They refused to believe I was from the United States. They said I was from Nicaragua. My car was taken, and it took six months to get it back. We're not infallible. You know, uh, our officers are human beings. They, they will uh, uh, get into situations where, where they don't follow our regulations, our standard operating procedures. But we do have a system in place to discipline those officers. But does the disciplining system work? Margaret Burkhardt case, and other legal aid lawyers don't think so. Cases. We have never once heard back from, um, from Mr. Reyes, even though some of the complaints have been lodged directly with his office. Often complaints are dismissed without adequate investigation. Often reports of abuse go unanswered. 
the United States government and Mr. Reyes have completely failed to make any attempts to communicate with our office or these individuals concerning these complaints. In 1991, 280 complaints were referred to the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division. Of those, only 84 were investigated, and only two cases were brought to a grand jury. Human rights organizations continue to call for the establishment of independent review boards empowered to investigate reports of abuse. For now, the atmosphere along the frontier remains combustible, with border agents overwhelmed and immigrants flooding over in record numbers. For Rights and Wrongs, this is Christopher Maggi reporting. Thank you for joining us, and thank you for your cards and letters. We're enjoying them. Please keep them coming, and we'll see you next week. I'm Charlene Hunter-Galt.